Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, uh, for, for join, joining today, too. So as you know, we're talking about Stop Your Closet Overwhelm, how to organize your closet for an empowered, fresh start. We all hope to be back to work or out and about soon. Um, so wouldn't it be great if we could uh, really come out with a great spring wardrobe and really feel wonderful in it? Um, so it does seem to be a universal problem. We're all different people, women, different sizes, tastes, ages, budgets, etc. But for some reason, most women have this closet overwhelm. So if you open your closet and have nothing to wear, if you don't know how or what to purge, and if you want to feel good about purging, then you're in the right place, and we're going to talk about this all today. And really, I also just want to make a note that, of course, in this horrible situation, um, I do want to address that. But now really is the perfect time since we all have to be home and we're all doing our part to stay home. We might as well take care of something that we're going to need to do anyway and feel accomplished when we get out. I'm just going to start with a little bit about me uh, so you know uh, who who is presenting to you other than uh, the wonderful introduction that I received. Uh, as a child growing up, I was always very naturally creative. I used to play with my clothing. I used to cut it, dye it, sew it, make jewelry, anything that I came up with to improve it. And so this led to a 20 plus year career as a clothing designer where I also learned about fabric, fit, and construction and understanding how to design for the particular customer, not just what was my personal taste. Uh, after the industry became quite rocky, I decided to create Style and Power, which is about six years ago. And uh, as Maggie said, I help women by stopping closet overwhelm, making them feel empowered in their outfits, and making it really easy for them to feel stylish. Uh, additionally, uh, I found, uh, as I go into women's closets, I found, wow, not everybody is as organized as I am. And, and that's okay. Uh, one of the things I do if my customers need it is to help them organize their closet. So that was a bonus that I found that I really know how to find, how to make space for things, how to make it visually appealing, et cetera. And also, uh, as mentioned, I now currently do some uh, creative work for Nordstrom in styling. So basically, the combination of my innate creativity, my knowledge of being a designer, and my organi organizational skills have helped me uh, to do the best that I can for my clients. Okay, so now to full, fully dive in. What are the top four reasons your closet is a mess? So these are some things that I have found that uh, some people, some people have a couple of them and some people it's really their main issues. So if you just don't make time to go through it, I get that. There's definitely things that I don't wanna make time for. I don't feel like making time to, to go through my taxes, et cetera, but you know, it's something you have to do. And so it's maybe a big project that you're putting off and therefore your closet's a mess. Uh, some people are very sentimental and they hold on to items that they're no longer wearing just for the sentimental value and that is cluttering up uh, your closet and all these different things uh, that you might be wearing. Perhaps you spent a lot of money on an item and you've worn it very little or not at all and you just feel bad about getting rid of it. Uh, items no longer fit you and you're hoping one day to be that size again. So these are the top four reasons that I have found. I would love if anybody has something else they think that is their issue, I would love to hear it in the chat box. Uh, we'll discuss it later because I definitely would like to address it, see if I have a solution for it, and also add it to my future presentations. So now I'm going to briefly address all of these problems um, and, and give you some sort of umbrella solutions. And the first one is you don't make time to go through it. So it's about making a commitment, whether you say, okay, on Sunday, I have free time, I have an hour, 
What is it? I'm going to put it in my schedule, just as you would make a commitment for other important things in your life. Because if you make the commitments, you're more up to do it. You might also want to give yourself a reward for doing it. And of course, it could be, you know, a new piece of clothing item, but it could be anything that makes you happy, a household appliance, or maybe it's your favorite dessert, whatever it is, but that makes you uh, more apt to uh, follow through on your commitment. Another thing which I've recently had a lot of people tell me is really, really helpful is to break it down. Um, and if anybody has heard of, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Marie Kondo. Uh, she is an organizing specialist, and I actually have not read her book. But one of the things she says to do is to take your entire closet and throw it out on your bed and then work from there. And my personal advice, which I've, I've gotten some, uh, you know, people have said that they really appreciate this advice, is to break it down. Because if you have an overwhelming task, you most probably are less likely to get to it. But if you can just break it down and say, okay, I'm going to work uh, on uh, for an hour on Sunday on this, it seems so much more manageable. You also might want to break it down by category. You might just want to do your tops on Sunday. Or you might want to break it down from there and say, let me work on blazers. Let me work on shoes. And little by little, you'll be able to chip away at it, and it won't seem as overwhelming. Additionally, as we all know, sometimes it's really just getting started. That is the hard part. And once you start on your jackets, maybe you'll say, OK, that wasn't so bad. I'm in a zone. I'm going to move on. I'm going to do my tops. I'm going to move on, et cetera, et cetera. And lastly, of course, if you really need more help or and or accountability, you can hire an expert because then you definitely have a designated time and you've put money towards it. So you're definitely going to follow through on that commitment. Uh, if items hold sentimental value to you. So I actually recently found that, and I didn't even think that of myself as sentimental, but I do have a couple of uh, college t-shirts, some sorority t-shirts, and, you know, that sort of stuff up in my closet. And, uh, you know, it could even be maybe your first date with your significant other, or whatever your sentimental reason is. If you are no longer wearing these pieces, I am not saying that you have to get rid of them. What I'm saying is please move them out of the front and center of your closet, your everyday wear, so that they're not cluttering it up. And when you open your closet, it's not amongst your choices. So for me, I have a box up in the top of my closet with these more sentimental items. If you spent a lot of money on it and you feel bad about getting rid of it, uh, there's various ways, um, if it's really a high-end designer item, you might be able to consign it. There are various ways you can sell it. There's so many opportunities online to sell things now. There's all different types of apps and websites, etc. So perhaps you could make some money back from it, um, and that would be helpful. You could also give it to a loved one or someone you know would really appreciate it. So sometimes it's a little bit more personal. I personally might think, is this something that my mother could wear? Could my sister-in-law wear it? Could a friend wear it? And then you feel better about getting rid of it if, these, if you know that these items are going to bring the person that you know some joy. And then later on, I'm going to address people that might even be more needy and appreciative. So if, not, if items no longer fit and you're hoping one day to be that size again. So this is, is, is a bigger question and picture that I can only address since I'm not talking to anybody individually about this. Uh, you first have to identify, are you looking to change your weight by five pounds or is it a substantial amount? Is there a certain time frame and a certain season? So it's, it's really going to, are you in the process of, of some kind of special diet or gym or something that you're actually actively going to get to your goal? So there's a lot of things to take into account, which I would personally talk about with my clients, and then decide what is really necessary and what percentage of the items are worth keeping and what we should really get rid of. But the blanket answer to that is that you want to keep some of them but maybe not everything. 
So um, I hope that these have helped address a little bit. And again, you know, I'm happy to talk to anybody more personally about their situations, but hopefully this will get you started. Uh, so do you have closet paralysis? This is literally when you open your closet, you're like a deer in the headlights and you're, you look at this huge closet full of clothing and you think I have nothing to wear. So many of the issues here are that you just have too much. You know, when sometimes maybe it's like going to the drugstore or the supermarket and there's too many choices in that category and you're just overwhelmed and you can't really focus in. Another reason could be you're not physically organized. Maybe you don't even know what you have, remember where things are. If you can't see them, sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind. So that could be an issue. Items don't fit or you're not wearing them anymore. So again, these are cluttering up your closet. Sometimes people don't have a signature style, which I don't, I think a lot of stylists say, oh, you need to have a signature style. I'm gonna say you don't need to have one. I think it's helpful if you do have one because pieces seem to mix and match within that style better. But I just think it can be more overwhelming to people if they don't have a signature style. And another point to that is sometimes that even if people do, they don't really know how to work pieces uh, together. And often I help my clients with some good general guidelines that they can take away with and put uh, and utilize into future outfits. And then there's redundancies. Um, if anybody wants to check out my website under my closet rejuvenations, I have a quick little video there of a customer that allowed me to tape her. And what happened, I didn't know what I was going to find when I went into her closet. And what I found is that she tended towards the same things. Now we all have colors that we gravitate for. And you know, as New Yorkers, we maybe have a selection of black boots. And that's okay, but you know, do all your black boots fit different needs? So, you know, is one have a higher heel? Is one a booty and is one higher on your leg? If they fit different needs, that's great. Or, you know, do you have a bunch of pencil skirts? But if they look redundant, then we want to get rid of one. If one's in leather and one's in a different fabric, it's okay. So if you have redundant items that really aren't useful because you have so many of the same different thing without variety that can be causing your your paralysis because you think you have nothing to wear because you felt like you just wore something very similar so here's some recommendations on what to purge you've heard the general you've heard some general things do you use it do you need it do you love it so first of all if something is ill fitting fitting or unflattering or it doesn't fit, uh, this is a very good reason to get rid of it. Now, also in ill-fitting, of course, can it be taken to the tailor is a question uh, you want to ask. Unflattering, is it just a style that isn't flattering to you and therefore you're not gravitating towards it? Uh, or is the unflattering because it needs tailoring? Uh, the don't fit, we sort of addressed a little bit uh, before, whether you think you're you're changing your weight or, or that sort of thing. If you don't like something and you don't feel good in it, why is it taking up space in your closet? Uh, you know, I, I like to say um, I'm, I'm a big foodie, and if I went to a restaurant and the, the dessert options on the menu were jello or a decadent chocolate cake, I'm going to choose the decadent chocolate cake. So if you have items that are sort of like Jello, no offense if anybody <laughs> likes Jello, but if you have items that you feel are, are the less exciting choice in your closet, maybe it's time to get rid of them. Uh, if they are items that are useful, maybe you want to earmark them to replace a better version of that you feel better about. If you're simply just not wearing them, and that can be the variety of reasons uh, that a lot of these things had mentioned, but if you're not wearing them, and I'm going to give you some tests um, that you can try uh, as far as uh, wearing items. If items are dated or out of style, 
So I am not recommending that everybody has to be the trendiest person and on top of trends. But you do want to look like you're up to date. And so what that means, if there are particular items that have trademarks of a certain era, I know I've gone through uh, customers' closets where a lot of the blazers have this wide sleeve and it's a three-quarter length and it's very tubular. And really, blazers have been more fitted and more longer sleeves for the most part now. So if something is a certain shape and it has a certain date on it, I think that was something from the 90s. I don't remember exactly when it was in style, but uh, it's time to get rid of it because you're going to look like a relic. And of course, if things are damaged, stained, peeled, if they're not looking fresh and they're going to bring you down that you're sort of wearing grungy old clothing, you definitely want to get rid of those things too. And I do have some suggestions for those as well. So here are some tests on how to purge. Uh, sometimes there are items you think about and you're sort of on the fence. Should I get rid of it? Should I not get rid of it? So um, what's nice about these tests is that you could try one, you could try two, you could try all of them. They're sort of exclusive of each other, and they may help you in various ways. The first one I call the test run. So that is on a day when you're not going to see a lot of people. Uh, it could be on a day... Uh, Right now, it could be on, a, on a, a COVID quarantine day. But let's say we're back and out in, in more regular circulation and you're just doing errands and going to the supermarket and the drug stores and things. You don't really plan on seeing a lot of people. It could also be, for example, on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving if you go to an office and it's just a day where generally there's not a lot of people there. You're going to uh, try the, put these items on, these clothing, these outfits, and really be cognizant and think about how you feel in these items. Do you feel good in them? Then you're going to take this test just a little bit further. What if you ran into an ex and you're wearing this outfit? Or someone maybe you went to school with many, many years ago and you haven't seen them in so long and this is going to be their snapshot of in time of how they see you and how you've age, so to speak. So if you're thinking, oh, I ran into my ex or I ran into the old classmate or somebody that I want to look good for, and you're wearing this outfit and you're thinking, oh, I wish I had looked better that day, that is a really good reason that this item is jello and you should get rid of it. Um, the year rule is sort of a common thing that I'm sure many of you have heard. And I, I am not going to say it's cut and dry, but I do think it could be a good uh, defining timeline to see. Um, it could also be that season for you, and I'm going to go into another test that's a little bit more seasonal. Um, so, you know, at the end of the year, if you don't wear it, do you get rid of it? Very potentially, if it's an everyday item that you would have normally worn, and again, exclusive of something that you might have worn during the time that you were in quarantine. But let's talk about being out and about every day, part of your everyday wear. Uh, special occasion wear, that's fine. Maybe you didn't have the occasion for it. Uh, but everyday wear, if you haven't worn it within that year, most of it can be gotten rid of. But you can also just re-look at and earmark these items and really think about, is this something that I'd like to get rid of? Why didn't I wear it within the year? And then a very more defined way is called the hanger switch. Some of you might have heard of this. I didn't make it up. Uh, and you can do your own variation of it. But basically, during the season, it's also going to depend about how large your wardrobe is. But essentially a season, you have all your items for the season. They're hanging in your closet. As you wear the items, you turn around the hanger in the other direction. So at the end of the season or whatever your time frame may be based on your wardrobe size, you look at which items have been turned around and which have not. 
Why haven't they been turned around? You can then identify that. Again, if it's a special occasion, no problem. But if these are everyday items and you just didn't gravitate toward them and you notice that other items you might have worn multiple times that you love, you might want to consider getting rid of these items. And then, of course, there's the general out of sight, out of mind. So if there are items you're on the fence about, you can take them and put them in a shopping bag or something that is, again, out of your regular rotation. Uh, put it under your bed, put it on the floor of the closet. It's not hanging in your everyday wear. Again, at the end of the season or whatever your time frame is, if you forgot all about it, you pull out that bag, great. This bag is going to the thrift shop, getting donated, whatever you deal with that. Um, you, you didn't miss the item, you can get rid of it. If, for instance, it matched a certain item in your, in your wardrobe or you were kind of in the mood to wear it and missing it and you pulled it out, great, keep it. Uh, but the items that you didn't miss can probably go away and you won't miss them when they've gone away. Uh, the next thing is really not how to get rid of items, but it's, it's a more of a way to test out items to maybe see if they're worth keeping. Uh, on the flip side, they could be sort of a background. So if you have a dress that you've had for many years and you're not sure how you feel about it, what if you updated it with some great accessories? Maybe if you put it on with some new shoes and a necklace, all of a sudden it's this great outfit from this dress that was just sort of a basic dress. So this might be a reason to keep it. So maybe you just weren't accessorizing it properly. And the last thing, I don't know if it's going to work for everybody. I'm also interested to hear in the chat if this is something that makes sense to you or, you know, if you can relate to. But I like to picture the item in a store. Now, this is, is really works if you have a particular style and you're thinking about a particular store. The store cannot be a department store or something that carries just a, the, you know, a variety of everything. It has to be a store with either a brand, let's say Polo Ralph Lauren. When I say that to you, everybody gets a picture of what the specific style is. It's the classic, it's the outdoor, it's the country, etc. So if you can identify what is that style from that store, whether it's the brand, or maybe it's a store that carries a variety of brands, but they all seem to fit into that aesthetic. Uh, an example I use, I'm not sure if everybody knows Intermix, but it's a trendy store. They have a ton of different brands, but all the styles are very contemporary and trendy. So if you want to fit into the Polo Ralph Lauren style or the Intermix style or whatever it is for you, you want to look like that style and you picture the item, if you can, if you're a visual person, if you picture the item hanging in the store currently for this season, does it feel like it works? Does it feel like it blends in and is that style? So a little bit more difficult, but if that works for you, um, and again, mix and match some of these tests uh, to see you know, which ones uh, work best for you and maybe different ones will come up with different results on, on what you might get rid of. And then finally, how to actually feel good about purging. So there are various ways you can make money from the items. Uh, I always get my tax deduction sheets. I know that things have changed now. I'm not quite really sure if I end up, will end up getting the tax deductions with the different changes, but it always makes me feel good to walk away with that little sheet and put a number on it to the value of the items. Also, as I mentioned before, you can sell items online, various apps and websites. Some places will send you bags, some places are sort of social media and interactional and that sort of thing, lots of things going on, and of course, consignment shops. Uh, that will either sell and you can get a percentage of the money or sometimes you can trade it in and purchase items out of their store. So a variety of ways to, to make money. Uh, charity, as I mentioned, there's always donations. And I have the uh, logos up 
of three particular places, and this goes back to originally how you can feel good about purging, giving it away to somebody that would really appreciate it. And so if it's not your mother or your best friend or something, what about some underprivileged women? So all of these three places, uh, they, they train women uh, to go back to work, their resumes, interviewing skills, et cetera. And one of the other things that they do is provide free clothing for these interviews. So for many of these women, they could come from unfortunate situations, which could include abuse, or it could include situations where they're doing OK, and God forbid, because of a divorce or because of uh, the COVID and layoffs or whatever it is, they find themselves in real financial straits and they absolutely need these jobs to be life changing. So if you have all these blazers in your closet, let's say, or suits or career clothes, and you're sort of holding on to them, even though it may not even be uh, either something that you don't love anymore, or maybe your wardrobe really doesn't need these type of items and you're still sort of holding on to them just because. What if you could change a woman's life by donating something where she could get the job, feel confident and empowered in these clothing, get the job and change her life? So wouldn't that be great? So all of these places you can donate career clothing to and really help change a woman's life. And finally, you could also help the environment. I mentioned before about uh, stained, damaged, uh, ripped clothing, peeling clothing, anything that just doesn't look fresh or really isn't wearable anymore. This can also, uh, this can, is clothing, any kinds of fabrics, and you can even extend it to your sheets, your bedding. I have sheets where the elastic doesn't fit anymore, old towels, any fabrications. Uh, can be pulverized and some places have recycling and sustainability programs. One of the big ones, believe it or not, is H&M. And I like to donate there because there's so many of them so close by, I'm usually passing one near a subway stop or something like that. So you just deposit it in their box and someone like an H&M will actually even give you a coupon for further purchases from them. They also own brands called And Other Stories and CO Ass. Those brands have similar donations. Uh, I know that Uniqlo and some of the sporting good uh, companies, and I believe Nike recycles shoes. So some of these companies and many companies are working on creating uh, fabrications that are created from, from old items and pulverized. So you can feel really good about helping the environment environment instead of just throwing them in the trash. So what are you waiting for? As I mentioned, now is really the perfect time. You're home for probably another couple of weeks and the weather is changing. So I recommend, I hope that this has been inspiring and that you will now go to your closets, make some time and get this done. I also just wanted to provide you with some of my information. Uh, feel free to go to my website, styleempower.com. At the bottom of most of the pages, you can sign up for my monthly Style Empower Insider News. I talk about all different things. Some of these tips and tricks have been part of previous Insider News. I've also uh, talked about I, I talk about why trends are like iPhones and I make a comparison how things go out of style I do little stories I do um, promotions all different types of things so sign up for that you can always unsubscribe if it doesn't work for you I also have two free ebooks on it uh, one of them talks about a lot of the things that I discussed today and actually has some additional organizational tips uh, as you are getting rid of things in your wardrobe, how you can actually see things and feel more organized within it. And the other ebook is for those ladies that are out there dating and how to feel confident in your dating clothes. Uh, anybody is also able to, uh, I have my email and my phone number at the bottom here. 
um, or you can find it on my website and feel free to contact me for a complimentary phone consultation. We can talk about your particular issues and I'm also giving some virtual uh, specials uh, so I can work with you uh, to go through your closet. So I think that is all of my presentation and I know Maggie hopefully has uh, some questions that people were writing in. Yes, I do. Thanks, Diane. That was really great. Uh, as a reminder, if you have a question, you can use the chat box, or you can also email info at SavvyLadies.org. And Diane, I wanted to let you know that earlier when you asked people to use the chat if they had comments on uh, reasons for closet overwhelm, there were some responses here, what if I need it one day, or what if I can't replace it? So I just wanted to share that with you. And sure. I also saw, oh, sorry, go ahead. Let me, let me, let me address it, otherwise I'll, I'll forget what everything is about. Okay. Um, so what I need, what if I need it one day? Of course, if I were working with someone, I would want to, or a phone com consultation perhaps, I would want to delve deeper into what does that mean to you? So if we are talking about everyday clothing, let's say you get up and go to the office every day and you haven't worn it within the year or you find that you're doing some of the different things and you're not wearing it, chances are you can get rid of it. But like I said, if it's a special occasion item and you didn't have an opportunity to wear it to that event, um, then of course you want to hold on to it. But everyday items, if year after year after year, if you're um, wondering if you need it, I feel like there's a little bit more of an emotional attachment to that. And although I'm certainly not a therapist or a coach, there, there needs to be a little bit more of a conversation on how how you can let that go. And, you know, it's kind of proven that you've had it for five years or whatever it is and you still haven't worn it so what makes you think that you are going to need it and there was a second part you said I've forgotten already about the needing what was the other the, uh, the other one was what if I can't replace it okay so um, you're not wearing it anyway so again I, I would want to know a little bit more about you can't replace it um, is it your wedding dress and you're not wearing it? That's fine. That's sentimental. You're not going to replace that. But but most items are replaceable in in the essence of you can fit that hole, that space in your wardrobe, something to go with something. But why isn't it replacing it? Is it a sentimental item? It, it sounds like it might be more of a sentimental item. Otherwise, everything can sort of have some sort of replacement. But again, I'd like to delve into that conversation a little deeper, and I invite any of the people that have put these uh, questions out there to have the conversation with me or anybody else who, who might want to delve a little bit deeper. Okay. And I just also wanted to share comments here. Uh, a lot of messages thanking you, Diane. Uh, specifically, you helped me realize that I suffer from closet redundancies. I can't wait to really make some time and start purging. And another comment here saying, I love your presentation, especially the last part about donating to charities and helping the environment with donations. You're helping to inspire me to organize during the pandemic where we all have a little bit more time. Thank you. So wow. I wanted to share that with you. Thanks, <laughs> everyone, for commenting that. Um, and so with that, I guess we'll move on to the, the first question for you, which is, Thing oh, I let's sometimes go to further questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one's asking. I sometimes keep something that doesn't look great, but I like the color. Should it stay or go? Okay, that's an easy one. I have, and and some, these are some of the things I write about, or I've done other style presentations where it's less organizational and more about it. I'm glad that you've identified the color that you like. What I will say is, me too. I There are certain colors that I gravitate towards. I'm a huge orange person. And with that, I found that I like other bright colors. You'll see in a lot of um, my Style and Power stuff, I wear a lot of hot pink too. I found that bright colors in general beyond the orange look good. 
good on me. But let's just say, for example, your color is orange. Um, well, now you know that color looks good on you, but that particular item does not. So when you're out shopping and you have an array of color choices, uh, choose the orange or go out and look for uh, a, a color, other items in that color, but get rid of the ill-flattering one because I guarantee you it is not the only orange or whatever color your color might be out there. But it's definitely a good thing to note what looks good on you and gravitate towards that. With that, I will say, try not to be too redundant. So I do have a couple of orange sort of silky blouses, but one's short and one's a little asymmetrical and, and all these different things. One has longer sleeves, but I know I, I really am not going to buy another sort of silky orange blouse, but then I have an orange sweater that's great. And I have an orange coat that's great. So you can have a lot of the color as long as you're not buying uh, redundancies. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, so an another question for you is asking about recycling at H&M. Does it have to be clothing that you purchased from that particular store? Absolutely not. It can be anything. And, and definitely don't uh, make sure even it's your old underwear. Any, any type of fabric, basically, you put it in a bag and you put it in their bin. Nobody looks at it, but it's also the fact that they, they want to be helping the environment and help sustainability. They are a fast fashion company, which means that a lot of things are cheap and disposable. So they want to do their part. They have an entire sustainability arm. And I believe any of the places, I mean, I don't, want, I don't don't quote me on 100%, but I believe almost all of these places that take donations for recycling will take anything. Mm -hmm. Other than, okay. actually, yeah, I, think, I think MAC lipsticks or, uh, you know, some of the, the cosmetic brands um, might only take their lipstick case or something like that. But, but, but for clothing, I believe it's, it's most every place will take anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I see we have a few more questions here. So the next one is asking what's the best way to organize items? Is it by category, or color, or outlook looking? Do you have some tips? Very good question. I definitely address it in my ebook. I didn't really have time to put that part of it in today. Um, now stores look beautiful with color selection. Uh, I say no. For me, um, and, and first of all, everybody has to do what works for them. For me, I have tons of prints, and it would be impossible for me to really organize by color. But further to that, I recommend by category. And what you want to do is start on one end with your tops that are sleeveless, short sleeve, go to three quarters long sleeve, and with your blazers. So what's happening is, you don't have a blazer next to a sleeveless top and the hanger gets moved and then it gets lost like because the fabric of the sleeve of the blazer is overwhelming the top. You don't even see it. You can't find it. You miss it. Here you know that you have all your sleeveless tops. If you're looking for something, it's in that category. All your blazers are over here and you can visually see things by sleeve length. So that's how I recommend doing it. And then, of course, separately, you have your uh, pants and your skirts and your dresses all by category. Uh, if somebody actually wears suits, whether it's a skirt suit or a pants suit, unless you're only going to wear it as a suit, if you have the flexibility to mix and match maybe the bottoms with something else or the blazers with something else, I recommend doing it by the category, putting it with your skirts, with your blazers, etc. It'll make you more up to think about it, and when you see it and when you know you need a suit, you know that this has a matching part, and you can always grab it as a suit. But you'll get a lot more versatility out of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question is asking if you have suggestions on dressing up for interviews and now that we're switching to Zoom, kind of online dressing for that. 
Um, yeah, so that's a whole new world. Um, interviews is a very broad uh, subject. Uh, it's going to, if you're in person, um, well, let me address Zoom first because I think that's a little bit of a quicker, more concise answer. Um, so uh, often, actually, usually you see the top. I don't even think you can even see what I'm wearing today. But um, you do want to wear something vibrant that makes you look good for the person who uh, wrote in about color, if that top is sort of interview appropriate, if there's a color that looks great on you. Like if, if, if I were showing more, originally I had put on a bright uh, pink top. Uh, then I realized you couldn't really see much of it. But, you know, if you are showing, depending on how your camera is, you want something that you're going to look vibrant in. Um, you also want jewelry. Uh, and this goes for all types of interviews. Um, you don't want jewelry that makes noise. And depending on what kind of creative industry you're in, you definitely want to look polished, but you can wear a piece that is memorable and, and sets you apart, a piece of jewelry. Um, and sometimes that's really nice to sort of show your unique style, especially if you're a little bit more within the cookie cutter, you know, uh, interview uh, outfits. Uh, in person, I think it's really nice to find out what is the corporate, what kind of industry is it in? What is the corporate culture of the company? Uh, as we know, some things are really professional and go old school, go with your suits or your career dress. Uh, many companies now are a little bit more casual down to the really uh, very casual. So you definitely want to always look polished, 100%, no matter what you're wearing, polished and put together. Often, um, this isn't for interviews, but often I wear jeans. But my jeans, I'll always be wearing heels, great jewelry, you know, make sure your hair is done and all your makeup and you're well coiffed and all of that. Uh, see if you can get um, from, if you're going in person, a little bit about who you connect with. I, I think it's very much okay to say, you know, I'd love to know what the corporate culture is uh, so that I can wear a most appropriate outfit. I mean, certainly word that well, especially if it's somebody that you feel comfortable with or maybe you know somebody at the company inside. You could do a little digging uh, and finding out a little bit more about what the corporate culture is. But my key word there is always look polished. Always look polished, always look professional, no matter what level uh, you're dressing. Okay, thanks Diane. It looks like we have two more questions, if you have time for two more. Sure. sure. Okay, so the next one is asking, how do you eliminate if you have a lot of favorite pieces? <laughs> Well, um, if they really go under the tag of favorite and you are really wearing them in the same amount of rotation, then by all means keep them. I'm not saying you can't have a large wardrobe. Favorite is a great word. If everything, back to my analogy, is some decadent and chocolate cake in your wardrobe, fabulous. You're in great shape. Wear those items. Keep those items. It's really the items that aren't your favorites that you're feeling more mediocre in. Um, so yeah, wear them. Enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. And the last question for you, Diane, is asking how often you recommend organizing your closet. Is it something you should do per season or once a year? What do you recommend? So everybody is different. Everyone has a different size closet and wardrobe. Uh, some people are more seasonal than others. So generally, we have our two seasons. It's your fall, winter clothing, and it's your spring, summer clothing. Personally, I actually like to do it by, even though I think of it as seasonal, as taking down my spring clothes, I still really do it in two parts. So right now, as we're, I know it's been a little bit kind of gross now and the weather sort of flips back and forth or we'll probably get a 70 degree day and then we'll be back to a 50 degree day. And I, I like to sort of try to brighten up my colors now and that sort of thing. And maybe I'm not wearing true open toe sandals now and I'm not wearing, um, you know, 
short shorts and, and white eyelet dresses. You're wearing more spring type of items now. So what I like to do is do my spring wardrobe, which is really spring, summer in two parts. First I go in and I take out, um, I took out, I have a light blue motorcycle jacket. So instead of my black one, which I still may wear back to some of my bright colors, I brought back down some lighter weight cotton sweaters. Right now is you can wear your peep toe booties as, a pull, as opposed to a full open toe sandal. So I like to do the season. So I take it down now. I get excited because I'm very seasonal, seasonal and I'm like, oh, I haven't seen this in six months and I get excited. It feels very fresh and new to me. There are certain items that you will wear for most of the seasons that maybe you can keep down. Uh, you know, maybe wear a blazer over it in, in, or a sweater over it in the colder seasons and then you wear it on its own now. So I recommend doing it, um, you know, I, I do it twice in a gradation for the seasons. I will then go up, now that I have my spring clothes down and some of the peep toe booties, let's say, um, or slip on sneakers, something of maybe flats where you don't have to wear socks, I'll then go up later and pull out the things like prints with white backgrounds and things that just feel to me like 90 degree heat of summer that I'm not quite ready for now. And that's another very important thing. Um, even if you're not very seasonal and you don't rotate things in the closet, what you want to make sure is what's front and center um, on a 90 degree day is not big heavy sweaters and wool coats and vice versa. In the middle of the winter when it's really, really cold out, you don't want to see that white eyelet dress. So what's front and center in your closet is all very seasonal and also everyday wear. So take those special occasion dresses and things that you're not going to wear every day and put them in a category on the side, either in another closet or at least off to the corner so that you can fully look at things that are seasonal, that fit, that you love, that you know are, are things you can go to every day as your everyday wear. That will help consolidate it to one place so that you know where your options are and not be cluttered with all these other things we've talked about. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And I just saw in the chat, thank you for answering that question. It makes a lot of sense. So with that, Diane, I want to thank you for your presentation today. And I want to thank everyone for joining us and asking lots of great questions. I'm sure everyone who is inspired to make the most of our, our time at home and do some organizing. So thank you so much, Diane. It was excellent. Thank you. This was great. Go do Thanks, your class, everybody. everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye.